Visceral dominance. The only way to truly describe the title reign of flyweight champion Valentina Bullet Shevchenko. Winning a record eight title fights, including seven consecutive defenses, the Kyrgyzstani national has all but cemented her place in the Hall of Fame. And yet, she continues to chart a legacy that will be unrivaled for years to come. Regarded as one of the most technical fighters ever to grace the sport, Valentina has dispatched each of her opponents in unbelievable fashion. Renowned for her elite well-rounded game across all disciplines of the sport, Shevchenko's claim on gold seemed inevitable, and on December 8th, 2018, Valentina would reach the summit. Facing Polish former champion Joanna Jędrzejczyk at UFC 231, the clash was a stylistic matchup of kickboxing perfection. Two elite strikers head-to-head -head for the chance to make history. Shevchenko would dominate nearly the full five rounds, embodying the term mixed martial arts in her performance. Mixing in a beautiful variation of Muay Thai clinch work, as well as her established wrestling and judo game, Valentina would be simply too much for the former champion on the mat, using side control to great effect with heavy elbow strikes. On the feet, and despite Joanna's striking pedigree, the outcome was no different, a counter-striking masterclass. Finding the range early, quick one-two combinations would be the centre point of her game plan, with varying spinning kicks and elbows finding great success. With the scorecards reading a unanimous 49-46, Shevchenko's illustrious reign at the top had begun. Just half a year onwards, she would be matched up against number one contender Jessica I, who had cemented her right to challenge following three straight wins. Naturally, the champion would open as a huge favourite in the build-up with regards to her recent performances, and this would prove to be the case come fight night. As round one began, the skill gap was immediately apparent. Light on her feet and ever patient, Shevchenko would hunt for openings, finding great success with kicks to the body and playing from range. A sloppy overhand right from the challenger would provide the window for Shevchenko to obtain a body lock and subsequent takedown. Her grappling credentials were enough to keep eye contained for the majority of the first, before a dangerous Kimura attempt would almost spell the end for the challenger. Almost as soon as round two had begun, Valentina would find her target, landing a brutal head kick, with the impact befitting of her nickname. It's like someone is slapping the bag with a baseball bat. Yeah, it's bad. This was a statement. Shevchenko had proved to most that she was here to stay, dismantling her opponent in a fashion that very few fighters could. Shevchenko's second defence would be won against an old rival. The veteran of the sport, Liz Carmouche, would step up to the challenge, who previously fought for UFC gold back in 2013 against Hall of Famer Ronda Rousey for the first ever women's bantamweight title. Strangely enough, Shevchenko and Carmouche had clashed before, and both of their careers were in their infancy. In 2010, the two would square off at a regional promotion C3, in which an illegal upkick near the end of the first would cut open the now champion and result in a doctor stoppage win for Carmouche as opposed to a disqualification. Over nine years on, Valentina would be looking to close the book on this story and avenge our loss at the Antel Arena in Uruguay. Whilst the fight itself was not the pinnacle of entertainment, Valentina once again proved to be far too dominant over 25 minutes, controlling every facet of the fight. The champion's one-two leg kick combination was a key throughout, leaving Carmouche off balance and immobilized as the fight went on. A striking combination in the third would drop the challenger, who to her credit rallied back and fought on for the championship rounds. The judges scorecards would read a unanimous 50-45 for the champion, adding a second title defence to her list of accolades. Shevchenko revels in the technicality of her performances. Speaking on Joe Rogan's MMA show, the champ aims to prove herself skill-wise as a cut above the competition. What I, uh, the idea of my fight style, to be able to um, win the fight, made the fight uh, very beautiful from the technical side, very intensive, very like uh, just high level martial art. But in the same time, without do it like dirty fight, like street fight, just uh, like different level, when you can finish your opponent without uh, them touch you. With her reign further solidified, Shevchenko would be matched up against number one contender, Caitlin Shukagan. A former contender within the bantamweight division, the American-born had dropped to flyweight looking for newfound success, finding unanimous decision wins over Jennifer Meyer and Joanne Wood. With an advantage in height and reach over the champion, Shu Kagan would hope to offer a tougher challenge. Yet yeah, this wasn't something unfamiliar to Valentina, who had previously fought at 135 despite her size disadvantage. With wins over now former champions Juliana Pena and Holly Holm, Shevchenko had proven before that her skills were more than enough to get a hand raised against tougher odds. With the fight beginning, Shevchenko would immediately resort to her patented counter-offensive style. With her striking acumen, finding the effective range was a gradual task throughout the first, 
firing off her classic one-two leg kick combination and countering with straights whenever the challenger would come in close. Chukagan would not offer much resistance here, occasionally throwing leg kicks of her own, and almost seemed to be reluctant to trade with the champion. A court body kick would offer a trip straight into full guard for Shevchenko, with a minute to go. Chukagan would attempt to use her length and flexibility to play a high guard, perhaps looking for a triangle or armbar, but a slicing elbow just before the buzzer would be a swift reminder from the champion that this fight would be only going one way. Despite the corner's best efforts, the cut would immediately spell problems for Shukagan, who opened the second round with blood streaming down her face. The champion would continue to attack the leg across the following five minutes, but a connecting spinning kick to the jaw was a stark reminder of the power she possesses. Another takedown into half guard would seal her the second round, with a seemingly defeated Shukagan almost accepting the position on the ground. A body lock and trip, this time early into the third round, would seal side control, before a quick trap of the arm would solidify a crucifix just 40 seconds in. A barrage of elbows and punches from the champion would cause serious damage, and despite Caitlyn's best efforts to use her hips to bump and escape, the fight would be called, securing Valentina yet another title defence. With her grip over the flyweight division now seemingly unstoppable, questions begun being asked over the level of skill of her competition. With the strawweight division hitting huge strides thanks to its array of talent, including Wei Li Zhang and Rose Namajunas, the almost complete lack of any challenge from those facing Valentina was almost a given at this point. Some may say that this is due to a poor standard of opponents, however I think it's fairer to say that Shevchenko's skill is simply too high. This would prove to be the case in her fourth defence against Jennifer Meyer, who despite taking a round off the champion in the second through effective wrestling, would once again be outclassed in another technical performance from the bullet. Jessica Andrade would be the opponent standing in the way of defence number 5, who would be looking for a second belt after losing to Wei Li Zhang over a year prior. For many, this was seen as the bullet's biggest test since capturing the title, with the grappling and knockout power to potentially make a statement on the big stage. Despite her disadvantages in height and reach compared to the champion, her skill was certainly apparent, dispatching Caitlin Shukagan with a body shot in her previous bout. And yet, the two's clash at 261 would end no different. Silencing doubters of her wrestling credentials following the Maya fight, Valentina would opt for a largely wrestling based approach in the opening minutes, controlling Andrade through the first. Accommodating for the bull rushing style of her opponent, the check right hooks off a southpaw stance would repeatedly find the mark, with Shevchenko finding her range early and anticipating any striking advances from the Brazilian. Almost in identical fashion to her bout versus Shukagan, Shevchenko would seek the takedown early, this time in the second round. In predatory fashion, the champion would trap the arm and then crucifix hail down strikes from above for a quick stoppage. With the flyweight division seemingly cleared out entirely and with no clear challengers, expectations of a trilogy fight with double champ and consensus female GOAT Amanda Nunes began to rise. Speaking in a post-fight interview following our win, Shevchenko would stoke the flames by calling for the fight in the near future. But some of us feel like the only real test left for you is that trilogy fight with Amanda Nunes. And do you foresee that happening at any point? And would you be going up to 135 for that, if so? I know it's gonna happen. I would love to make it happen in 125, <laughs> but it's if she has to catch her leg for it. <laughs> yeah. No, yes, I see it's definitely gonna happen sometimes. Uh, I don't see it rushing because I want to um, like the perfect timing, the perfect time, and like be ready for the fight for for this fight. Be ready like 100 and more percent for taken. That's why when it happens and it, it's gonna happen, it's gonna be huge still. It absolutely will, but huge deal. Although 0-2 against the Lioness, the result of their second fight for the Bantamweight Championship in 2017 is still to this day highly contested, with Nunes winning a razor-close split decision in a back-and-forth technical clash. It's even more impressive when taking consideration of the weight and size difference between the two, with Nunes even defending her second belt at 145 pounds. The fact that both fights were so competitive is truly a testament to Shevchenko's skills. Even with Nunes suffering a shock loss to Juliana Pena last year, her quick redemption of the title in July has re-solidified the Brazilian as a continuous threat. Whoever the victor, questions of the women's GOAT debate would finally be put to bed. Following another clinical performance at 266 against the surging Lauren Murphy, who was dispatched with a flurry of strikes and ground and pound inside four rounds, Shevchenko would have the opportunity to surpass a milestone seemingly set in stone by Hall of Famer Ronda Rousey. A win over Brazilian Talia Santos would confirm seven straight title defences and bestow her the record of the most in women's UFC history. Breaking through the contender series, Santos would find her feet in the division with four straight wins over numerous flyweight mainstays, 
A jiu-jitsu practitioner, the Brazilian challenger would hope to contest with Shevchenko on the mat following her rear naked choke win against Joanne Wood. Despite her evident grappling skills, almost everyone expected Valentina's dominance to continue without much fanfare. But how wrong we were. Within the opening minutes, everything seemed to be going as expected, with Shevchenko landing a counter right hook that stunned Santos momentarily. A failed takedown from the champ, however, would be the beginning of a phenomenal performance from the Brazilian, who seized the opportunity by remarkably taking the back with two minutes to go. A tight body triangle would ensure there was no escape for the remainder of the round as the champion's energy was sapped. Another huge moment for the challenger would come early into the second, with Santos using her weight to drive the champ to the mat early. Using her veteran experience, Shevchenko would remain a threat on the bottom, threatening with arm bars and triangles whilst her opponent would remain largely inactive in top position. A stand-up would bring the two back to their feet once more, where in which Valentina would make a decision that summarised a rare sequence of poor fight IQ. Despite her previous attempts being ineffective, the champion would once again look for a throw to take down her opponent. And while succeeding, a moment of excellence from Santos would result with her in control, scrambling through a back take and armbar attempt into full guard for the short remainder of the round. A similar moment would come early in the third, with Shevchenko finding another trip, and yet Santos would this time drive her hips to the side, creating a window to stand back up and nullifying the champ's efforts once more. A takedown this time from the challenger a minute later would remarkably result in Santos taking the back again and threatening a rear naked choke until the bell would sound. With three rounds gone, many could make the case that the champion was three rounds down. It's fair to say her corner thought so as well, as Shevchenko would show her championship pedigree as the two would enter the fourth by turning up the pace. A clash of heads earlier in the fight would only help the champion, as Santos's eye had swelled almost completely shut as the two engaged once more. Sensing the momentum shift, Valentina would go on the offensive with repeated strikes, stunning her opponent with a brutal knee. Despite her success throughout most of the fourth, a swift reminder of Santos's threat would come in the form of a beautiful takedown, this time off a slip with seconds to go. The fifth and final round. Santos had proven most of her doubters wrong already and would silence a few more as she countered another throw attempt from the champion, controlling her against the cage for the early period. Another takedown would finally pay dividends for Shevchenko, who would rack up control time on the scorecards to close out a brilliant back and forth between two of the best in the division. For the first time in years, Shevchenko would be going to a decision in which the outcome was truly uncertain. Contest 49 46 for the winner by split decision and still the undisputed UFC. With her hand raised, Shevchenko's reign at the top would continue. What happens next is anyone's guess, but with flyweight talents like Manon Fioro and Aaron Blanchfield surging up the ladder, it's fair to say Shevchenko won't be short of competition anytime soon. Hi, I hope you enjoyed this video. It took a long time to make, so uh, if you did enjoy it, please hit the like button, subscribe. That's greatly appreciated. Uh, I've got a lot more cool stuff coming. It just takes a lot of time, so bear with me on that. Uh, yeah, thank you.